what has changed? God has changed one thing. I've had an awful lot of questions, an overload of them. I don't know if it's because of false teaching somewhere or the fact that I haven't taught it well enough. The very last days, what's going to happen then? And we're going to kind of just run a summary over seals, trumpets, and vials, okay? Now, what is the word seal in the Greek tongue? It's shrag idzo. You know, when Marines frag something, it's like it might frag your mind. That means blow your mind, <laughs> okay? That'd be a little heavy, but what it means is it means more than what most people take it to mean. It means to stamp with a signet for, to, for preservation, and it, it means also a secret. Not everybody can receive that seal of truth in their forehead. Now, the seals are given, shrag itzo is given, simply to prepare your mind for what's going to happen so that you know how to overcome when it does happen. Now, what's a trumpet? A trumpet is sounded to execute an order. A trumpet is sounded to an army to charge, to get it done for action. Let me say again, a seal is to place it in your mind so that you know what the program is and that you are a able servant of God because you know what's gonna happen. Now, what is a vial? A vial is a shallow dish, and that's when you pour it on them. That's when it happens. The seal is to foreordain your mind for what's going to happen. The trumpet is to let you know it is time, and the vial is where the rubber meets the road. That's where it happens. And naturally, let's take, let's take the sixth seal, the sixth frag, okay? That's when you're taught in the word that Satan's going to be cast from heaven. And as well as the seventh trump, it sounds execution for him to be on the toe of Michael exiting the gates of heaven with all of his little troopers to come down and help you out. <clears throat> to come down and give you the opportunity to practice your Christianity, all right, what you know, the seal. And the vial is when you're delivered up and you pour it on him, okay? Again, that's where the rubber meets the road. That happens in the sixth vial, you know. The sixth trump, time to happen. The sixth vial, it is happening, okay? We got our tenses right, okay? That's important. It's very important. Um, open your Bibles, if you would, to Revelation chapter 1. This is going to be a very simple message, and yet at the same time, it's going to be a little bit on the deep side, but not for you. Not for you that are familiar with the seals. There's only one way you can understand the book of Revelation and that's to be able to rightly divide the word, to know your tenses. If you don't know where you're at or what the time element is, chronologically speaking, you're, you're not going to know that there certain things are spoken of as past. Well, why could, why, how could it be spoken of as past and it hasn't happened yet? First, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. John speaking, and I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. In other words, I am Him. I am the Savior. In other words, to understand the tenses, you've got to go to the first day of the millennium. That is the Lord's day. How long, anyone in here can answer this. How long is a day with the Lord? A thousand years. 
Well, how long is a thousand years? Well, it's a millennium. If you're taken to the Lord's day, the millennium, then if something is stated as past, it means it happened before the Lord's day, but it may not have happened yet here now, okay? 2004. So, so the tenses will eat you alive. For example, Revelation chapter 12, Satan, I beheld Satan kick from heaven. Well, when? Some people might tell you, that's already happened because it said was. Okay. Well, not if you was on the Lord's day, it was and was. All right. So you got to stay with the program. Okay. You got to understand. First of all, you have to understand the seals are to be implanted in your mind. Fragzezzo. Where you understand what's going to happen for a special reason so you're not deceived, so that you know what's going to happen and that you're prepared for it. Now turn with me to the 17th, uh, the 17th chapter of this same book, 17th chapter. And the 17th chapter, I wanna pick it up, if we may, with verse 12. Verse 12 of the 17th chapter, and it reads, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. You're all familiar with this vision that was given. Which have received no kingdom as yet, <clears throat> but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Who is the beast? Of course, it's the Antichrist. Meaning these ten have nothing to do with this earth. Why? They're supernatural entities kicked out with Satan. They're not earthly kings. As I've taught you before, we, we covered this here last year at Passover, that these are supernatural kings. They're not the 10 earth kings you read of in verse two. Let's cross over to verse two, same chapter. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In other words, the first part of the period that Satan will be in control, the kings of the earth will be running the first half. But the second half is run by, this has not been changed. I, wanna, I want that to be drilled into your mind. You've got to, and I'm, I'm gonna do that tonight. You're not gonna have any doubt about it as to who's gonna be in charge, when, where, and what they're gonna be doing. All right, <clears throat> so back to verse 13. These are the 10 that are supernatural that will rule for only one hour. That's a figure of speech and it means the hour of temptation, okay? But uh, how long was this period of time originally? It was, it was seven years. Book of Daniel declares it, Book of Revelation declares it, originally it was seven years. But what has changed? That's what's important. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 13, verse 14. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Are you, are you, are you ready? Do you know the difference between seals, trumps and vials? Do you know those seals is to know what's going down, how it's going down, and what it is that you're to do about it? Well, we're going to win. It is written. But you must understand, and this is why I was so meticulously with you last year, showing the, the last two years, quite frankly, showing the difference between the earthly kings and the supernatural kings. And that's why you don't understand the last five months if you're not real careful, okay? There's no need for, of all times in the world to have indecision it would be at that time. Because you're gonna find out that this one hour, this hour of temptation is a five month period. And that five month period is the time of the locust. Incidentally, did you know that this is the year that the 17 year locust comes out in 
Illinois and up in that way, boy, they're going to catch it. Woo, Texas. I mean, you're going to have locusts. That's grasshoppers to us. <laughs> Woo, fishing good, but they'll be full, fat. Okay. Anyway, just, just in passing, got that, okay? But the Lord, with him, we're going to win, okay? But you've got to remember there are two segments to it. Two segments. The earthly kings, they're with that old harlot. They bring her in. She receives a deadly wound. And then look out. We'll document all that. I, I don't know why it is that we have so much confusion concerning that five-month period. And I'll, I'll take my part of the blame, or is somebody confusing people? I don't know. But I want it set in concrete in your mind. Because quite frankly, in that five month period, you do not want to be deceived. It could be really bad because that is your hour. That's why you have ears to hear. That's why you have eyes to see, is to know what's going down and what it is that you're to do about it, okay? So here we have this one hour, which is a figure of speech. Now go all the way back with me to Revelation chapter 8. <clears throat> I want to go all the way back to the seals. Shragidzo. To mark with a signet, meaning God's ring. He can put this in your mind. Or, or, and then it is there for preservation and keeping where people can't change it. And it is a secret. It means secret. But it's not secret to you or those that have eyes to see or ears to hear, but it, because it is that secret, Fradsidzo, that, that you can't, there's some people you can't tell it to. You can talk till you are blue in the face and uh, don't hold your breath or nothing now, okay? <laughs> but you're not going to get anywhere with them. Why? God maybe has put the spirit of slumber on them to where if God puts something on somebody, you're not going to move it, not unless he tells you to. Okay. So here we have it. Now let's, let's synchronize our minds. We're going to start here with the seventh seal. Now, now one more time. What is a seal? A seal is something placed in your mind with a signet of God or it is a secret. Okay. It's for preservation so you don't let anyone change it. Chapter 8, the book of Revelation, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, man, this is the last one. It's over. The seals are over. There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Well, isn't that a coincidence? It didn't say on earth. It said in heaven there was silence for about half an hour. What hour do you reckon that is? Come on now. You know what hour it is. It's the hour of temptation. Okay. <clears throat> then what happens when that seventh seal is open? And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumps. That's something I, I don't you to ever forget. Not one trump has sounded when the seventh seal sounds. Not one. Why is that? It's not time. Not time. You've got to wait for the bugle to blow, spiritually speaking. Well, you're not too upset about it because you've got the seal. What was the first seal? The first seal was this fake riding in on a white stallion. So what's the first thing that's supposed to be put in your mind if you have eyes to see or ears to hear? The Antichrist is coming first. Don't forget it. Seal it. Frag it. I probably shouldn't say that. Okay. <laughs> Do you all know what fragging something is? Do you know what a hand grenade is? Do you know why it's sawed up in little quarters and everything? That's so when it explodes, it busts up in little fragments, and that frags people, <laughs> okay? Whoo, little whirling ball of buzz saws. Well, that's what it'll do to your mind. I just think it's, maybe I have a weird sense of humor, but shfrag, idzo, you know, it'll frag your mind. It'll blow your mind. 
right there. Just to seal it and know that you have something God wants you to have, a truth. And then the second seal, what is it? Well, it's war. You see war coming in. And then you see inflation hit. And you see people working, really working hard, and maybe all, by the time they get their payments made and their interest and everything, maybe they can afford a loaf of bread, okay? <clears throat> and then the next seal is people are really complaining, and he said, whoa, 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 whoa. In can't be until your servants, fellow servants on earth do the witnessing they're supposed to do. That, that, uh, that would be seal number five. If I remember right, when the fifth seal was open, I saw the souls under the altar. Those seals, you got to know, that's school time. That's why we teach, is so that you have them. But again, I remind you, when the seventh seal is open, they haven't even been given the trumps yet. Not, not a, not there, okay? And um, why then after the seals do we see something else here in the seventh chapter of Revelation? What does it say here? Let's look at it. Chapter seven, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor of the sea, nor on any tree. These four winds bring about the end. You'll read of them in Ezekiel chapter 37. You'll read of them in Daniel chapter 7. You'll read of them in Revelation chapter 7. It's where God brings the pressure on one point and the end is here. It's over. Verse 2, And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal, now stay with me now, having the seal of the living God, the signet, the fragizzo, fragizzo. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. You know what he's gonna tell them? Stop. We can't let it happen yet. Why? Verse saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, what, what is in your forehead? Your brain, your gray matter. It's what you absorb and record. You know, it's, it's better than any computer you can buy. I mean, you can just load it and load it and load it. And some of you get overloaded pretty easy, but <laughs> not really, okay? Sometimes you may have to boot it. <laughs> but, you can always, re it's amazing if you have the gift of memory, you know, what that thing will do for you. So you've got to know the six seals. The end is not coming until those that are supposed to know them are familiar with them and know what to do. Why? Because God is going to use you. If you don't know, he can't use you. Why? Well, it's like you've heard me say many times, would you hire somebody on your job that didn't know what was going on for the highest dollar salary? I don't think so. God uses those that want to work. And God likes to use people that like to work. God does not like lazy people. This has nothing to do with handicapped persons or anything else. But the ceiling must take place first. That's, why, that's one of the reasons I truly believe that God has given us such a wonderful platform that goes around the world. I mean, just plain old country people that we can speak about the simplicity in which God's Word comes together and in which we know and understand those seals and nobody can take it away from you because Fredzidso means it is sealed there. We're in your mind. And it is there for preservation and there for fulfillment for you to participate in it when it comes to pass. So uh, let's just summarize a little bit. I want, we're just going to take little short things. I'm going to move you around quite a bit. 
but there's nothing complicated about this. Seals are to seal in your mind what's going to happen. Trumpets give us the time it should happen or begin. The vials are when we pour the juice right out on the seat of Satan, when we pour it on our enemies. The cup that God is giving to the Lord Jesus Christ through the servants to pour on the enemy. It's the time of action. So in covering that, we know and we understand that, um, that um, it had to stop. The end couldn't come until the sealing took place. Do you want to know what I think? I think the ceiling is moving right along. I think it's happening real good. Now, um, with that, I want to go to Mark 13. You're all real familiar with Mark chapter 13, and that happens to be where we're going. There's one thing you must never let anyone take advantage of you at you, of you Ova, and that is our Father's word. Let's listen to your Father's word, concentrate on it, seal it, and believe it. What I want to check out here is what has changed, because you know changes can throw uh, people off, right? You know, and God doesn't really do that very often, but unless He really loves you. If he really loves you, he might change something. Chapter 13, Revelation, verse 19. You all know what this is. It's when God's elect are delivered up before the false Messiah. Verse 19 reads, For in those days shall affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. It's just not going to happen. Verse 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days... No flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then, if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. You know the fake. You know he's fake. You know he's not the real one. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise. Not maybe shall, this is the words of Jesus Christ, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. That's even you. Hey, when somebody can snap their fingers and lightning come from heaven, that's impressive, what? Well, you better have it sealed in your mind because he's gonna do a lot more miracles than that, you know? But it's kind of like this stage behind me where they're putting on a magic show, you know? where they make things disappear, but it's all, well, maybe I'm not supposed to be talking about this. It kind of, it don't really do it, okay? It's just an illusion. Right? I don't want them trying it on me, okay? Or my cat, okay? Now, okay. We, now, we read that. We're, I, boy, I flipped a long ways from 13. But take heed, 23, but take heed before I have told, foretold you all things. Do you know that he has? He has foretold you all things in this letter. Now, I, I'm going to have a little pop test here. We just read what was changed. Did it say that the deeds of God's word was going to change? Did he say, I'm going to change things around where you're not going to have to do this? No. Well, what did he change? The time, and the time only, not one deed will be changed. It will all come to pass exactly as it's written. Don't ever let some individual confuse you on that. I don't know if somebody's trying to or what, but I can tell. You know, I get, I get about 1,100 letters a day, all right? And I get the feel of the pulse when somebody's messing around with something somewhere. So anyway, I, I think, it, I thought, well, as simple as it is, we need to go through it so that God's elect, having been foretold, know exactly what's going down. He has foretold us that that false one is coming first. He has told us that he's going to seal in our minds 
exactly what's going to happen. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Have you read it? Have you listened to it? Have you let the simplicity of Christ's teachings flow over the buds of your mind whereby you can receive it? You see, it's not complicated. It's common sense. Seals are to impress the truth in your mind, prepare you. You know, if you're a warrior, a soldier, what do you think you go to boot camp for? You're, not, you're, you're dangerous to have along till you learn how to use the equipment you're going to work with and have all that training. But what do you think is different in God's Word? That if you're going to be trained, that's what the seals are, are preparing you prophetically what is going to come, uh, happen and how it's going down. But if you're not familiar with the time sequence and if you let somebody jockey you around in that, that's setting you up for deception. That is not the time to be deceived. It's going to go by in a hurry, real fast. Why was there silence then in heaven for half an hour? He didn't change any deeds. He only changed time. And it was only heaven that was silence. All heck was breaking loose on earth. Our Father's Word is so complete, so simple. So we found out not one trumpet had been passed out. Not one. Now I want to go to the ninth chapter of Revelation, which you're all familiar with. Like I said, I'm jockeying you around, but I want you to make notes and I want you to remember this. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus says something, do you believe it? Well, you should. What did he say he shortened? Time. Do you believe that he knew how much he was going to shorten it way back at the beginning? I do. Now, let's read how much he shortened it to. He says, I have foretold you all things. So he's not going to tell you he did something without sharing it with you. Okay, Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. And this, you're all familiar with this. this. is why I'm not covering the whole thing. This is going to make this real quick, okay? But I want it quick so it's simple in your minds. It's important, extremely important for this hour. And he, this is where the, um, the fifth tr uh, angel has sounded the trumpet, all right? And I mean Satan is throwing out. He's on earth, all right? And he's deceiving a lot of people. Verse 4, And it was commanded them, that Satan and his little angels, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not, I repeat, have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, why would God say, God knows they can't hurt those that have the seal in their forehead? the seven seals. Why? We know who he is and we consider him an abomination. He's our enemy. We're not about to have anything to do with his deception. If he brings a scorpion around us, we stomp the thing and he knows it. He knows we don't hanky with, with his little demonic spirits that we have power over him and we utilize it. Here's what he tells us, see? He said, you can't, you can't bother. You know, he'll say in another place, touch not mine anointed. Do you believe that? You better. Satan knows don't hanky with God's children that are sealed. That's why it's important to recognize how important the seals are and that you better have your, um, Start to say your pistol loaded with them. I mean your mind, you know, have it sharp. Have it loaded, all cylinders, all right? With what's about to happen, how it's going down. Because you see, this tells you what to do. It lets you know. Do you, don't you understand that you have a destiny? Do you think God caused all this to come to pass because he thought we were so pretty? Look around you. <laughs> 
he's got something for us to do, see? And he wants us to do it. Okay, verse uh, five. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, period, okay? And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man, okay? And so we have a five month period. If we continue reading, we even find out because for the wise, he gives Satan's name in two different languages, Greek and Hebrew. The destroyer, which is to say Ebabdon in the Hebrew tongue and Apollyon in the Greek tongue. You heard me this morning bringing out the word Apollia. Well, Satan's name is Apollyon. That's his name, and Apalia is what he'll cause you to do if you allow it, and you're not going to. So what did he change? He changed the time. And then he says, I have foretold you all things. How long did he tell you the time Satan will rule was shortened to? Five months. Now, we've got a problem here, and I want you to kick this around. I want you to think about it. I'm not going to solve all of your problems for you. I expect you to figure, see through some of this because you're supposed to. We got a five-month period. Oh, well, let's go a little further in Scripture before I pop test here, okay? Maybe, maybe that'll be a better deal, all right? But we've got two segments, though. I'll go ahead and say that. We have a time that the earthly kings are going to rule, and we have a time that Satan... And these um, divine people, angels, are going to rule. And it's all going to take place in a five-month period. The main thing you want to remember is that even though the earthly kings handle half of it, half an hour, half of it, Satan's still in charge. He's got them. He controls them. And, um, and hankies with their minds. And, and that's just the way it is. We know it's five months. But then, like I said, that's what Christ said he was going to do. This is Christ's words. That's what he did. But as it is written in Revelation chapter 12, don't turn there. There was a great flood. Satan brought it forth. It's a flood of lies. And you're... Your seals in your mind let you know exactly uh, what's going down and how it's going to come to pass. And that he's going to have a flood and he's going to run the woman into the wilderness for how long? Times, times, and a half time? 1,260 days? It's all three and a half years. Well, I thought he changed it. He did. Don't deceive yourself. It's changed. But the symbolism is still there, very much in effect. Uh, uh, turn, I think I'm going to ask you to turn there. I would just read this and save you. I'm going all the way to Genesis chapter 7 for one verse. I think it's worth it. Genesis chapter 7, one verse we're going there for. The flood is ha the real flood that destroyed the hybrids and destroyed those that disobeyed God from off the face of the earth, the, which is the equivalent of the flood that Satan brings forth in Revelation chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, verse 24. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Now, just in case my computer is off a little bit, how long is a hundred and fifty days? Five months. Well, do you think God would tease us a little bit? He knew in the beginning what the flood would be shortened to, what, 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 how long it would take. And why, how easily he could say, behold, I have foretold you all things. And there we have it. That that flood also was a five-month period. Now, let's go to the deed. 
The deeds were not changed. The deeds are described real well in the book of Daniel. My God is judge, is my judge. Book of Daniel. Chapter nine, you're all familiar with it. What are the deeds? What's going to happen? You're all familiar with this, um, the ninth chapter. Did I say seven? I meant nine. Ninth chapter of Daniel. And it reads in the 27th verse of that ninth chapter concerning the 70th, the um, gap theory on the last week. 69 have already passed and he tells what's going to happen in that last week. And there is a gap. Verse 27 reads, he, and he shall confirm the covenant. This is the false Christ. Shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's a seven, that's a week of years, seven years. And in the midst of the week, well, what's that? Well, that's three and a half days of a week. Or if it was years, it'd be three and a half years, right? In other words, it's split in half. That's my point. The deeds aren't changed, only the time. And he shall cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease. When? In the middle of the week. In the middle of the time period. In the middle of the five months. Well, what is our sacrifice today? It's our Holy Communion. Well, why would we stop taking it to, Almighty, to the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he's going to claim to be the Lord Jesus Christ and the whole world's going to whore after him. It'll be to him, not to the Lord. That is the abomination. And for the overspreading of abominations, let me, tr let me translate in the Hebrew, for the overspreading of his wings, abomin with, it will bring abominations. He shall make it desolate. Why? Because he is the desolator. Even until the consummation, that means the very end, and that's what we're priming you for, the very end. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, translated upon the desolator. He's going to lose. God's going to do him in. Do you know what? Again, what was changed? Time, not the deeds. It's still going to be split in half. Uh, 12th chapter of the uh, book of Daniel. Okay, while we're here. Verse 7. Chapter 12, verse 7. I'm, I would apologize for handling y'all around a lot, but I'm not going to because you're all excellent scholars of God's word. And it's no problem to you at all. Verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen. That's a compliment, incidentally, Okay which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. In other words, it's that three, that's, that, that is three and a half times, okay? so that you understand. Was that changed? No, yes. It was shortened. Well, what, what was it shortened to? Well, I don't know. What's half of five months? It's two and a half months. Well, then how long is that five month period? Well, it's one hour. Uh, uh, spiritually speaking, the hour of temptation is five months long. That's why, the, why is there silence in heaven for a half an hour? Because in the middle of it, he's going to de facto be kicked out. And heaven will be a peaceful place. But woe to us here on earth. It is our time to rumble. And you're looking forward to it, aren't you? Amen. All right. Let's get it on. It's time. It's almost time, okay? I, I just, my eye just caught an old trooper uh, that... Uh, uh, he knows how to get it on. He was with me up at the reservoir in the Chosan uh, fight, the campaign, about 54 years ago. But he looks like a kid, doesn't he? I don't know. Amazing. Uh, 
I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me, but when I see an old buddy like that, you know, we've been through it and we know what it's like. Verse eight, and I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? What did he tell Daniel? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. They were sealed. In Daniel, he sealed the word. And in, in uh, Revelation, you don't have to turn this time. I'm going to do it for you, okay? I'm going to clue you in. I'm going to, to Revelation 22 because there's a verse there I want you to, to have, okay? And he says in Revelation 22, this is when we're in the eternity, all right, and getting set for it. And he said... Verse nine, and then he said to me, see thou do it not for I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. That's what I say to you today. We're at that time. It is the time. And in Daniel, the word was closed. See, the seals were closed. But beginning in this generation, the generation of the fig tree, those seals begin to fly open and they spread like wildfire around the world. And they are locked in the minds of people that know why they possess them so that they can recognize the trump and then when it comes time and they're handed their vial, they know where to pour it because they understand the seals. What did God change? The time, but not the deeds. The deeds follow exactly as it is written. And so it is. Our Lord would never deceive anyone. And he always foretells us. And the main thing, the way you don't get confused is listen to him and not man. Don't listen to this man or any other man without checking it out in the simplicity of your father's written word. I have one more place. This is going to be kind of short. And there's some here saying short. <laughs> That's right. I want you all to turn to the 13th chapter of Revelation, okay? I may take you to one other place. It just popped into my mind that's just nagging at me here a little bit, okay? But I, the main, there's one thing I want you to know and I don't want you to ever let anybody mislead you. You know when the first beast that rises from the people of the earth ruled by the kings of the earth comes into being, that that's a one world system. And that's what the 13th chapter of Revelation speaks of. Verse 3 of chapter 13. Listen carefully. I want you to think time, time. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now, what received the deadly wound? The earthly king's organization, not Satan's. Okay, you got it? Now, you're going to have to recognize this, okay? And, and this morning, I told you we had a type in, in Iraq. Of one old boy, king of Babylon, thought he had his way bought through the world, that all, everybody was crooked, and they'd take his money and defeat, you know, vote us down. That's a type. You've got to be able to recognize things when they come to pass. Four, and they worship the dragon... That old Satan, which gave power unto the beast, the Antichrist, and the one world political system, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Nobody, because he controls the world, okay? Except us, all right? Verse five, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and the power was given unto him to continue 42 months. How long is 42 months? It's three and a half years. Okay. Was that changed? Yes. It was changed. The overall seven-year period to five months. 
So how long is 42 months? Two and a half months. There is a truth embedded in that I don't want you to ever forget. Quite frankly, that's what this, this lecture is based on. It documents that the false messiah and the dragon are not here until the last half of that seven year period, which is now shortened to five months. You got that? Did you hear it? Did you read it? Where it said he continued then after he healed the deadly wound for the little earthly people, he continued for 42 months, which is half of that five month period. I pray I'm not confusing anyone. It changed, remember? Okay. But that verse documents that the, the um, supernaturals do not de facto rule. They control beforehand, but they do not rule until the last half of that uh, five month period. That documents it, okay? You don't, don't let anybody hanky with you on that, okay? It didn't say they ruled for the full seven years. No, it was even split in two. How many of you know why months are used in relation to Satan? It's of the night, of darkness, okay? Christ people, the prophecies are always given in solar, which is to say days. That's why even the two witnesses, 1,260 days, not 42 months, okay? Which that also has been changed. It has been shortened. One more time, and I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna close, okay? I, I mentioned the flood of Satan a minute ago in chapter 12. The little woman when Satan was cast out, it said, woe to you on earth. There was silence in heaven that half hour. Let's talk hour for a moment because now you're, you have the seal and you know and understand. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time two and a half months. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. That's to say Christ, mother Israel. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and a times, that's three and a half a time from the face of the serpent. He can't bother her. Why? She has the seal of God in her forehead. Fragizo. It's sealed there with the signet for preservation, for remembrance, for knowledge, for wisdom. And the, womb, and, um, the serpent cast out of his mouth of water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, but the earth opens and swallows anything he puts at that woman in the wilderness. And that woman happens to be the bride of Christ. And that bride is none other than you yourself, okay? Those that wait, those that know and that God has foretold. So in recapping, don't ever forget it. The seals are given to us before ever one trump is issued. And I'll even say vile. Uh, quite frankly, the vials don't cut loose until the seventh trump sounds. Don't let that throw you. That's a different lecture for a different time. I don't want to overload your donkey, okay? I want to keep it, <laughs> I don't mean that really, but we just cover a little bit at a time here, but especially that part that is necessary, okay? That you're not deceived. So the time is shortened to a five month period. And even, you know, even the time of the locusts, do you know how long that the locusts go through that particular period? Five months. 
He gives us double witness to everything he has foretold us all things. And therefore, the first half of that five month period, you're going to see governments jockeying. You're going to see them moving. You're going to see agreements like you've never seen before. And then pow, right in the kisser, okay? She's going to receive a deadly wound. And that deadly wound will be healed by the appearance of the false Messiah. Presto. I mean, he can snap his fingers, lightning come from heaven. Do you know what the people of this world will do even when they try to remove the, God's name from everything? Do you know what they would do if they saw a man snap his fingers and actual lightning come down? Woo-wee. You talk about powerful medicine, as they say in Oklahoma. That's powerful medicine, okay? But that's just, that's just a, a little bit of his tricks. As a matter of fact, Jesus was even concerned about you. He said, I believe if I hadn't shortened it, even the elect might be deceived. I mean, he's that good. But he's not going to fool you. Okay, so there you have the five-month period brought down um, to a two-and-a-half-month period. The first half will still be governmental, political. And the second half will still be religious. Nothing changes except time. And if you've got the money, he's got the time. Okay. I'm, I'm teasing now. I'm through. Okay. So I'm, my Irish is beginning to act up a little bit. Okay. And so uh, anyway, don't, beloved, if all times this is not the time to play guessing games or listen to fortune tellers, okay? It's just not right, and it's not the time. You can be deceived. Well, how do I know? God's Word. Stick to it. Don't let anyone interrupt you as to how it will go, okay? Free introductory package. Say, this is something we would like to offer for a one-time gift to all the new folk that study with us. This introductory package gives you a monthly newsletter, which means each month you will receive a newsletter with a Bible study on it. Hey, raising funds? No way. We're not beggars. We're Bible teachers. That's what it consists of. A tape catalog that will give you all the topics that are covered and the Mark of the Beast tape. What is this Mark of the Beast? Is it really on your forehead? No, Satan's considerably more intelligent than that. It's in your forehead, which is to say, in your mind. Have you been deceived? This is a free offer to you, one time to each new student. Say, find out what's really happening and what the story is on the Mark of the Beast. In other words, like maybe they're bilingual, triple lingual, and so on. Some people can speak as many as five languages. And some people have to, have to study in multiple languages, all right? But that's what it's talking about. And it's, it, what it means is they're an interpreter. Is it the list of the gifts? Well, I don't know. If that's all you've got, you're in pretty bad shape without them. Example, if I wanted to go to Ciudad de Mexico to teach God's Word, I would need to take a translator, or they wouldn't know when to say amen. Okay, Ellen from North Carolina. Is it a sin to participate in a church that doesn't teach God's Word? You know, it's hard to imagine a church that doesn't teach God's Word. That's kind of a sad state of affairs, isn't it? What is it a church of, then? If it's not a church of God's Word, what is it a church of? You'd have to ask yourself... I'm going to give you some scriptural advice in the second epistle of John. In the three little epistles, read that second one and read it well. It states very clearly that if you support, or if you even as much as wish God speed, to a group, a church, or an organization that teaches any other gospel or thing other than this gospel, the Word of God, you be, if you even wish it God's speed, you become a partaker of its evil deeds, okay? Bill from Iowa, thank you so much for still coming in our area on public TV. You are welcome. 
Okay, let's see. Question. When Joseph's brother, were Joseph's brothers doing God's will or their own when they sold him into bondage? That's kind of a tough one. You know, um, they, they were hurt. Little Joseph didn't know it, but God was causing little jo Joseph to brag in front of them. They thought, you know, all of you are going to bow and gravel to me. If you want to get some brothers upset, that'll do it. All right, It'll do it every time. And God caused him to see that in his innocence. All right. And, and naturally, the brothers, they were hurt. And, and Joseph himself would tell them after they finally came to Egypt and all was said and done, and they he made himself known to them. He said, don't blame yourself. It was God that did this so that our people could be saved as well as all peoples in that area could be saved. Um, but a lot of human nature went right in with that. Michelle from Tennessee. Is it important to study the New Testament or the Old Testament or both? Both. It's the Word of God. Documentation, we'll get to it next week, in, um, or this week even, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, where Peter will say, uh, it takes both. That's what you do. You listen to the prophets as well as the gospels. I'm out of time. Hey, this hour just seems to fly by. I love you all a lot. You know why? Because you enjoy studying Father's Word in, in, in completeness, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Most important, God loves you for it. You know, it makes His day for you to do that. When you pay attention to His Word, it makes His day. He loves you for it. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. When you bless God, He will always bless you. Put your cares on Him. Don't worry. He'll do your worrying for you is what He's saying here. All right? Now, most important, this. Hey, stay in His Word. Set a little time each day aside. Stay in His Word. Every day in it's a good day. You know why? Even with trouble, Jesus is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.